Hi, this is Dr. Eiko Holman, and I would like to share with you the new revelations that I have received about the quantum physics and how it applies to our Christian walk. And the quantum field is actually the bridge between the spirit field and the physical and material field. I highly recommend the book by Phil Mason. It's called Quantum Glory, and it is excellent book. And uh, I learned a lot from that book, but uh, the Lord gave me uh, additional insight about the quantum field. And so I'm going to share with you. Uh, and but the, uh, you know a lot of things I'm saying will not be new if you read that book, Phil Mason's book. Okay, so uh, the whole idea of that book, and I fully agree with him, is this. The quantum field is the part of God's creation, two-stage creation. The quantum field that's subatomic, uh, minute particles, and uh, that field, and then the physical material uh, creation. And so you can think of quantum field to be the bridge between the spirit realm and the uh, physical and material realm. And so uh, as, as I delve deeper into that, the Lord revealed to me quantum field is actually analogous to God's soul. And I'm not saying quantum field is God's soul. It is related to the soul of God. And many people don't even realize God talks about his own soul. And in, in many occasions in Old Testament as well as in the New Testament, now remember one uh, occasion God spoke to his son, Jesus, on, uh, after his uh, Jordan River uh, you know, baptism in water. And when he came up, he said, the voice came from heaven. He said, this is my beloved son in whom my soul is well pleased. My soul is well pleased. In a, another occasion, I am well pleased. He did not say soul. But uh, as God made us in his own image and likeness, and we have been made as triune being, spiritual and body, and so soul is contained in uh, our thoughts, thinking part, and the emotions, our feelings, and then our will. And so the uh, book of Genesis talks about when he, God breathed into the physical material realm, he skillfully fashioned the physical body of human beings then he breathed into the physical body, and then man became a living soul. So that means the living soul was not there until God breathed his spirit into the physical uh, material realm. And then the third element came into existence, which is the soul. And so uh, as I said, uh, we are made in the uh, image and likeness of God, and so God himself has his soul. He has feelings, he has emotions, he has will, he has thinking, and of course, Jesus is called the Word of God. And so, he represents the thinking and the even feeling part of God's soul. And uh, uh, so, his Saul, well, of course, another occasion in the uh, Old Testament, he was, my soul is grieved because of my people. He's talking about Israelites. Uh, turn away from him and turn to idols. You know, the image and the, uh, you know, graven image and so on. They were told not to do it, but they did. And so God said, my soul is grieved. And so God talked about his own soul and so on, 
but uh, uh, we are commanded to be in agreement with God's thinking and feelings. And so if we think about, think after God's thoughts, and then we are in agreement, we are resonating with God's thinking. And of course, Jesus was totally 100% in agreement or in line with God the Father. And uh, he often said, well, in fact, uh, he mentioned in the uh, book of John, chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, he said, the Son can do nothing of himself. He was talking about himself. But he said, the Son can do nothing of himself except as the Father shows me. And so he does only what the Father shows the Son, the me. He was talking about himself. And then the Father loves the Son. He shows all things that he himself does. And so this was the real uh, commitment of Jesus not to do anything outside of the will of God and his thinking, his feeling, and so on. And so uh, we need to follow the pattern of the complete dependence, obedience, and the love relationship so that we will not do anything outside of God's will, God's desire, the will, and so on. And so uh, what the Lord uh, impressed upon me in my following Jesus' example is we are to think after God's thoughts and we feel after God's feelings. And will is already expressed in the Word of God. And Jesus was actual uh, visible expression of in invisible God. And so he said, he has seen me has seen the Father. So in every way, not only his teaching, Jesus' teaching, uh, uh, examples of healing and casting out demons and raising the dead, cleansing the leper, and so on. The, every act or every sentence he spoke and taught was the representation of God's will and desire and his feelings too. And so that's the reason I use the expression like resonate. And uh, the good example is the tuning fork. Let's say, you know, tuning fork with the uh, key of A. And you know, you strike the tuning fork, whoom, you know, then goes whoom, and then the, any uh, uh, instrument, like a violin or a guitar nearby without touching that instrument. And if the key of A is striking and then that the particular string, uh, it will start to vibrate in the same key. And so that resonating uh, response in vibrating is the key to our example, uh, the Jesus example that we are to follow in agreement, in harmonious, uh, resonating. And so I think you heard about the wine glass when the opera singer with powerful voice and a particular note and, uh, you, you know, sing. And then you have seen or heard about the wine glass shattering. Okay. And so that's the resonating with the particular singing voice resonating in the wine glass, that's why it's shattered. Now, same uh, principle can be applied in getting rid of cancer cells. Uh, Dr. Royal Reif actually developed a powerful machine which will actually create a certain wavelength of frequencies and so on, uh, since every organ has a unique frequency and every pathogenic conditions like cancer has its own uh, unique frequencies. So he developed the machine which can adjust to a particular uh, uh, frequencies. And he had, I believe, 
100% success in getting rid of cancer, uh, in the, even the last stage cancer, of healed, and sometimes it actually shows explosion. Cancer tumors will explode, and the total healing takes place. And uh, the other way is Monroe Institute. They developed a, a machine to uh, resonate with the healing, the wholeness of, let's say, liver, or the lungs, or the heart, or the pancreas. And for example, pancreas, the healthy pancreas has its own unique uh, frequencies. And so this particular machine will uh, arrange it that they vibrate at the same frequency, and then the machine can actually shoot that particular frequency into the person with the ill condition, let's say pancreas, not functioning. And then uh, after so many treatments, and uh, cause the pancreas to resonate and eventually get back to in agreement with the same uh, healthy resonant and uh, uh, frequencies, and then the person will get healed. And this particular examples usually takes many uh, uh, sessions of sending that healthy frequencies into the organ, into the pancreas, into the lungs, into the in, you know certain parts of the body. But it takes uh, several uh, sessions. I, I forgot how many. Uh, occasions they had to do it until the person is completely healed. So they can do it with the healthy uh, organ uh, frequencies into the diseased condition or the diseased conditions the, like a cancer cells, unique frequencies representing cancer conditions. Then it would insert into the body so that the cancers cells and you know tumors will just explode when the resonance is happens. So either way they can get rid of the conditions and so it is a wonderful uh, discovery and I believe uh, future of the medicine will be mostly that way, you know, non-invasive way by frequencies and so on. So. I, I did this in a, a quantum field. Uh, the Lord directed me to position myself in the heavens, looking down into the quantum field, which is subatomic uh, realm, which is a bridge between the spirit realm and the physical realm. And so I looked down at the, that area, and uh, I started to resonate with the Kingdom of God principle of atmosphere. And as you know, Kingdom of God atmosphere is peace, love, joy, and abundance, and righteousness, and so on. And so I was resonating in a medi meditative state, and you know, uh, pressure, 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 and just meditating on love of God. And I said, the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I am full of love, and I resonate in the, uh, the love of God. And resonate, resonate, take some time to actually do that. I resonate in peace of God, because the Prince of Peace is within me. And so resonate with the peace, resonate with joy of the Lord, and so on. And then... Uh, when, when I was in China, for example, uh, there, there, were, or there were many, many, many sick people uh, came, and I did not see them individually, but the Lord directed me to explain Matthew 6.10, when we are commanded to you know, speak to the Father, the hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this part is uh, commanding, it's a decree. It's not a prayer, but it's a decree. And so I explained to people that when we decree it, you actually see the kingdom reality 
of no sicknesses and diseases, no lack of poverty, no violence, and so on. And so when you are speaking to the sick person, and uh, at that time the uh, caregiver of the uh, uh, orphanage brought some children into the room. I did not see them because I was in the front uh, you know, uh, uh, part, and so I didn't see them. But uh, this caregiver actually repeated after me, and when I said, speak, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, lay hands on that child who was blind, deaf, crippled. And uh, so I said, kingdom reality of no sickness or diseases and pain will be superimposed over this current earthly reality of this child with blind, deaf, and crippled. And so she obeyed, and, and this was through interpreter, so in Chinese, I spoke in English, but she understood. But the principle of superimposing the kingdom of God reality to be uh, laid out on the current reality in the earthly realm. Do you know that later, I, I did not see it happening, I wish I did, but uh, she reported back to me. This girl, I think it was about uh, eight years old, uh, she turned to her when she was speaking. That means she was able to hear before she could not hear, okay? And then later she made uh, eye contact with this caregiver, and so she was excited, you know, she, she could hear, she could see, and then so she picked her up and on her feet, you remember she was a cripple too, and so she started to stand on her own. Previously she couldn't, and she made steps and walk, and at first it was, you know, uh, bad, you know wobbly, but she, she was able to walk, and step by step, she got strength coming in. And so this was a wonderful testimony of that superimposing the kingdom of God reality into the earthly reality, which is less than perfect, you know, chaos, disorder, sicknesses and diseases and so on. That was actually changed or restructured in the quantum level, in the quantum field, in turn, restructure the physical and material realm into the wholeness, order, and health. Praise the Lord. So this is really a wonderful way of uh, speaking, decreeing the quantum physics and to line up with the, the you know, kingdom reality. Okay, I have a lot more to say about the quantum field, and but uh, right now I'm going to stop now and thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for revealing this to me, to us, that the the quantum field is the bridge between the spirit realm and the physical realm, and we are privileged to access into that from the throne room. Amen.